So why doesn't low THD measurements lead to good sound? That's a great question from Ethan Wong in Melbourne, Australia, who writes, Hey Paul, I watched your video about how important is the DAC chip itself. I'm confused about that uh, statement that you made that low THD doesn't mean good sound. Can you explain more about why THD doesn't mean beautiful sound? And how do I figure out a good DAC or a bad DAC based on specs? This is a rehash of a constant theme that we talk about, and I'm sure it won't be the last of these videos. And, you know, sometimes, hmm, sometimes the way this stuff works is you, you continue with the same set of questions over and over and over, but each one at a slightly different angle, each one at a slightly different day and level of understanding that, that I can share with people. And it's, it's all part of the learning process. I can't come up with some magic way to explain everything in one seven minute segment. So it takes a number of these short seven minute segments, different questions, great questions from customers that then I can and work on individually and over time we can chip away at that level of understanding. So, to be clear, THD can be an indicator of how something sounds and I don't want it to come across as if it isn't an indicator because it can be. Generally, and he here's where I was trying to go with that before, THD levels are so low these days on everything, we, from, uh, DACs, phono preamplifiers, power amplifiers, you name it, they're all well below 0.1%. So anything below 0.1%, a tenth of a percent, is probably something that is not going to be audible in terms of the THD itself. And I'll, I'll get into that in, 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 a, in a second here. And what I mean by that is that the actual measurement, as long as it's below about a tenth of a, of a percent, is an indicator, maybe an indicator of something else going on that we can hear, but not necessarily itself as an indicator of what we would expect to hear. So for example, if, what's a good analogy? I'm not a chemist, but, but for instance, if, if you, let, let's say you were looking at water quality and it had a trace amount of something undesirable in the water, but that trace amount was low enough where it wouldn't bother you, okay? So you could drink that, no problem. But an engineer, a scientist looking at that water might go, you know, the only reason that there may be a trace amount of, of this bad stuff is because something bigger and worse is going on. In other words, it's an indicator of what something else might be going on that would lead engineers and scientists to look down here and go, ah, we've got a, a lead in the pipe. We've got a leaky this or that. So don't get, don't get too carried away with the actual measurement itself because it's valuable as an indicator. It's not usually very valuable as a measurement tool to tell us how something's going to sound. So what is THD? Total harmonic distortion is basically any products added to the signal. If I take a thousand hertz tone, which means there's a sine wave, that is running at what we would call the fundamental, one kilohertz, and that sine wave is going up and down very smoothly between plus and minus, plus zero, minus zero, back and forth. If it's a pure sine wave, if there's nothing added to it, just that fundamental thousand cycles, then we could say that has no harmonic distortion. Harmonic distortion happens when the shape of that sine wave changes ever so slightly. And when it does that, it's no longer pure, and that adds harmonics. So you might get something that is above 
uh, well, harmonics were always above, but you, you might get something like, oh, a second order harmonic, which would be double the frequency, or a third harmonic, which would be the, you know, the, the odds. So 3,000 cycles would be the first odd harmonic of 1,000 cycles, and 2,000 cycles would be, or hertz, <clears throat> would be the, um, the second harmonic, and, and on and on. So those, those are added things that shouldn't be there. And as I mentioned before, anything less than a tenth is probably not going to be real audible on most systems and to most listeners. They are valuable as indicators. So now, how do we, uh, so I, I know I'm, we're, we're just chipping away at this subject. Just chip, 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 drip, drip, drip. We'll, we'll get there. You'll, you'll have a, a much fuller understanding as you watch these videos and I try and explain little bits. And, and that's going to be the way that I, I, I help us understand what all this means. The, the, the other part of his question is, how do I figure out how to go to DAC or a bad DAC based on specs? Uh, you can't. You, you really can't. I, I can show you two, I, I can show you prototypes in our lab of identical measuring DACs. Hell, I can show you identical measuring DACs that are based on the same DAC chips. The same FPGA, the same Wolfson or ESS chip, identical. The, the architectures are the same in terms of the DAC itself, but it's the output stage where the differences are made. It's the power supply where the differences are made. And most of you don't have enough of a clue what all that means to make an informed judgment. So guess what we have to do? Use our ears. And I know that's hard, it's a little scary, because that relies on us as opposed to other people helping out, but that's just what we have to do. Or reviews, or a dealer or a friend, read the forums, come talk to us. We're happy to loan you equipment to, so you can come try it out or visit us, whatever it takes. It, it's possible to do this. It just isn't something we can just take score like a football game and go, there's the winner. Doesn't happen, doesn't exist. That's a really good question. We will keep, we will keep chipping away <laughs> as time goes on. All right, get out of here. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.